In this video, we're going to look at widget animations for custom Kinter in Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com, and in this video, we're going to look at widget animations with custom Kinter. And this is great for like sliding a menu onto the screen and then sliding it off again once you click on it, or really sliding anything onto the screen and then sliding it away using animations. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So this is what we're going to build. And if we click on this, we get this animation where the text box pops up. We can type on it, whatever. We click here, boom, it goes back down again. So we can see up and down. And you can see I've got relative positions on here. We're going to use that just to help us along the way. But boop, animation up, animation down. And we can vary the speed of this. We'll look at how to do that. Uh, we're coming in from the bottom, but you know, it just will change these numbers from X and Y coordinates. If you want to swing it over from the side instead of the bottom or top or whatever. So let's head over to our code. I've got a file called ctk underscore animations.py and it's our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. And let's just start out by creating a quick little frame and put a couple of buttons in it. So I'm going to go uh, my underscore frame and it's going to be a custom tkinter.ctk frame, we want to put it in root. And you know, that's all we need. Now let's go my underscore frame dot pack this guy, give it a pad y of 20, push down the screen a little bit. Now let's create some buttons. So let's say buttons. And we might as well comment here frame. So I'm going to call this up underscore button. And this is going to be a custom tkinter dot ctk button. And we want to put it in my underscore frame. We want the text to say up and we want the command to equal up. Now let's go up underscore button dot grid and we're going to use grid because we want to put these two buttons next to each other. And so I'm going to put this in row zero and column zero. And let's give this a pad X of 10 to space it apart from the other button a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy and paste it in again. But instead of up button, let's call this down button. And instead of column zero, we want it to be column one. And instead of the command saying being up, we want it to be down. And let's have the text say down as well. Okay, so we've got these things. Now let's come up here and create some quick functions. So let's define up. And for now we want to pass. And let's also define down. And for now we want to pass. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's create say uh, a text box. And you can do anything you want here. You could use a text box, an entry box, any widget whatsoever. Realistically, you're probably going to use a frame for this because you can put stuff in the frame. So if you have a menu, you would build it into that frame and then just move the frame and that will move everything in the frame. But just for fun, and we'll switch this to a frame later, but we'll start out with building a text box. I'm going to call this my underscore text. And this is going to be a custom tkinter.ctk text box. We want to put it in root. And we want the width to say, I don't know, 200 and the height to be, I don't know, 200. And let's make the width 400. Let's make it nice and big. And then let's my underscore text. Now, normally we would dot pack this guy, but the secret to these animations is using the place system. Now, tkinter has three, I guess you would call them location systems, right? You have grid, you have pack, and you have place. Now, I almost always use pack. You notice up here we used grid. I usually use grid inside of a frame so that we can put things side by side. Place, I've talked about a little bit throughout this playlist in the past, but not a whole lot. Place allows us to place items at very specific X, Y coordinates in our app. So that allows us to give us pinpoint precision. So we can say, put this at over 200, down 200, and then move it to over 200, down 100. And it will very specifically move it to where those X, Y coordinates are. So if you're not familiar with place, go back in the playlist. I go back in the channel actually and look at the videos. I got tons of videos on, well, I got a few videos on place, but for now, just kind of go with me here and just realize we need an X and a Y coordinate basically. And we also will want to anchor this. Uh, let's say we want to anchor this in the center of the screen. So here for X, I want to put this at 700, which is our X chord or our X width. So let's go 700 divided by two. So that'll put it halfway across. And then Y coordinates up and down, we have 450. 
So let's do 450 divided by two. This should put it right around the, the middle of the screen. So let's save this and run it, see if we got this right. So I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore animations.py. And when we do, we got our two little buttons here and we've got our text box. It's basically in the middle of the screen and that's good. So we've got this thing and we've got it in the middle of the screen. Now we probably don't want to start it at the middle of the screen. If this was a menu or anything else, we would probably have this off screen. So then we click this button, it comes up, right? So let's go ahead and just move this off screen. So let's head back over here. And for Y, instead of 450 divided by two, let's come up here and let's create, um, I don't know, my underscore Y. And let's set that equal to 450 divided by two. So it's in the center plus 350. So we wanna move it down another 350. Right. And for fun, we might want to say global my underscore y because we're going to use this guy inside of these functions. And that's just a quick and easy way to do that. If you don't like global variables, I don't care. I use them all the time. It's no big deal. So here, let's just call my underscore y. So if we save this, head back over here and run it, we see that our text box is no longer on the screen. Now, if we take this guy and just sort of expand it, we can see, oh, it's down there. It's just been moved down 350 pixels, I guess, right? So, okay, that's cool. Now, how do we get it to move? Well, we kind of know how to do this. We've configured things in the past. And when we configure, we're basically updating them. And we're going to kind of sort of do the same thing. We're not going to configure this thing. We could though, but what we're going to do is just change the place. So let's say on the up button here, let's just paste in our text box. And instead of my Y, let's also make this global. So we want to use this inside of here. And let's just say my Y plus equals, I don't know, say 20. So every time this thing gets called, it will move it up 20. Actually, we want to minus equal 20, right? Because 350 pushed it down to go back up, we need to subtract, right? So, okay, let's save this and run it. So we've got this guy and we click up. Every time I click it, it kind of moves up 20. Ah, now it's covering the button, right? So, okay, that's kind of cool. Now let's see what the position is as we do that, just to kind of, you know, keep track of this. So let's go up underscore button dot configure and let's set the text equal to my underscore Y. So let's just see what's going on here with these coordinates, just so we get a real understanding of how this is working. So here, when we click it, now it's at 555, 535, 515, 495. As we click it, we're subtracting 20. Okay, so now when we get to about 195, I think I want to stop it right there. So how would we stop it right there? Well, we could just use a, an if statement and center it on that 195 thing, right? So let's go uh, if my underscore y is greater than or equal to 195. Because remember, it starts out at like five something. So as long as it's greater than 195, we're gonna allow it to keep coming up. But as soon as it hits 195, it's equal to 195 and we wanna stop. So uh, let's just pop this stuff in here. And okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And I know this isn't animation yet. We'll get to that in a second. Before we do animation, we really just kind of need to understand the coordinate system. And that's what we're learning right now. So if we do this, we keep going, bop, 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 bop. Oh, hit 195, I can keep clicking it, but it's not gonna move because our if statement is no longer valid, right? So, okay, and it still works there. But now let's move it back down again. So I'm just gonna copy all of this and let's put in our down function, but instead of minus equal, we want plus equal. And instead of 195, what did it start out at? At like five something, let's say 550. I don't know what that is, but uh, let's just change that to that. Let's run this guy again and see if that worked. So we can go up, 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 up. It hits 195, up, I'm clicking it, it doesn't do anything. If we click down, uh-oh, something's not right. Uh, what happened there? Oh, greater than, this should probably be less than. Okay, let's go ahead and save this, try it again here. And we go up, 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 up. And then down, 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 down. Oh, it kind of toggled a little bit. Oh, because of, our plus equal is outside of the loop here. So uh, I don't know, we'll play with that later. So now we've got it to go up and down, right? But how do we do that automatically? We don't wanna click the button every time to make it do that. How can we just make it 
work without clicking the button? Well, we can use the after function. So with the after function, we can call root dot after. And remember our app is called root. So we're saying, hey, this root, this app after, uh, let's say uh, one second, we wanna rerun this function, All right? So we can save this. And here we want the down function function to run. Now, one second is a long time for an animation, right? That's probably too long. But let's just test it out and see. So 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, definitely too long. So let's, uh, it's still running. So, all right, that's just, it's too long. So what we could do is change this to, so a thousand is a second, a hundred is what? I don't know, less than a second, 10th of a second maybe. Let's see how this goes. This is probably gonna be too slow also. So uh, it's better, but still pretty slow. Down, <laughs> back down. Okay, so 550 was too, was not enough. So we need to change that number also. So let's, I don't know, let's just change it to 750. Uh, and also that's too slow, so let's go 10. So this is very fast. Save this, come back up here, run this guy again, and now zoop. It goes up, zoop, it goes down, zoop, it goes up, zoop, it goes down, right? Okay, and that little glitch at the end when it went up, when we click this thing again, that seems to have gone away somehow, or maybe it goes up, but it's so fast we don't even notice, so we don't care. Either way, there we go, zoop, zoop. Uh, let's see, how fast can we speed this up? Can we, do we dare go 0.1? It's probably gonna be too fast to even notice, 0.1, or one, I guess, whatever that is. Uh, let's try it again, run this guy, boom. Oh yeah, it's just too fast. You can sort of see if you do it a lot, but yeah, that's just too much. So I don't know, let's go five maybe. I don't know, we're just playing around here. Oh, that's not bad, five, five, 10, somewhere around there I think is probably good. And that's all there is to it. Now we're doing up and down. You could do left and right, right? How would you do that? Well, I'm not gonna go into it, but we're doing the Y axis, which is up and down. You would just do this same exact thing only for the X axis. We would keep Y steady at something, probably 450 divided by two, so it would be halfway off. And then we would just plus and minus the X. We would create a variable called my X probably, or you could use my Y. It just doesn't really make sense to do that, but you could. That would just swing it from the left or the right, depending on the plus or the minus, in the exact same way that we did with the my Y. So, um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Very cool. And, uh, you know, it's a little clunky. It would be nice if tkinter or custom kinter had some sort of animation function that you could just call. But when you get right down to it, this is not that hard. And uh, very cool. Now, again, I mentioned you could do this with a frame. So if we came down here and changed this from a CTK text box to a CTK frame, and then let's give it a foreground underscore color of, I don't know, white or something, just so we can see it, right? So if we save this and run it, we're gonna get this exact same thing, but now it's a white frame. We can't type anything because it's just a frame, but you know, if we wanted to put something in that frame, we very easily could. Um, let's come down here and go uh, some underscore text, and it's gonna be a custom t tinter, dot ctk text dot ctk label and we want to put this in my underscore text and we want the text to say hello world and let's give this a font of helvetica and like size 24 or something like that and let's go some underscore text dot pack give this a pad y of like 40 to push it down the screen a little bit now, if we run this guy, zoop, this is hello world on the inside of it, zoop. So hopefully you understand that by doing it with a frame, we could build out that frame however we want. We could have anything we want in the world in that frame. So if you had a menu, if you had some other system functions, you know, if you had some buttons, you could put buttons in there, anything you would normally want to put in a frame, you can. And then, you know, you could just zoop, zoop, animate it in and out just like that. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that because it's a little silly. And I'm gonna change this back to a text box. Get rid of
rid of this foreground color. But yeah, super easy, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.